This is an attempt uh, to make a little instructional video about how I do some of the uh, lettering things that I do. Um, I'm going to use the Procreate app and this time I'm going to talk about how to put a photo inside of letters that you make. So we're going to start with just a, um, a high-res square. Um, makes it good for printing if I want to do that eventually. Um, oh, it looks looks good on the screen too. So um, we begin by just making some letters. So I'm going to pick one of my favorite tools. I um, kind of designed this uh, folded pen brush here. It behaves somewhat like um, like a real folded pen, uh, which I like a lot. So that's why I'm uh, using it. Um, I'm just going to. Um, write some letters here. Oh, running out of room. No problem. Just gonna cheat. It's not great, but at least get this, uh, get us going with this. So this is going to be my uh, image of the letters. I think I'll at least try to straighten it up a little bit. In fact, if I don't like it at all, I'm going to start over. <laughs> That's the good news. You can just do that. I'm going to turn that layer off in case I change my mind later. But uh, I'm going to create a new letter, uh, a new layer, and um, I think I'm going to do a different pen this time. Maybe I'll go with uh, the big uh, mono line, be kind of '70s looking. that either. Let's see, how about, uh, oh, I know what we can do. Roll it out with this sketchy one. I'm going to go full thing here. It's going to be way too big. We'll go a little smaller. didn't really mean to do all of these retakes on the letters, but uh, maybe that's helpful for somebody. Part of being an artist is making things look easy. It's probably good to know that even though I do this all the time, I don't get it right the first time, often. Okay. A little smaller here. Well, I'm liking this better now. There we go. So we'll just use that as the uh, the lettering part of it. And then the next thing that I need to do is, and I I need to pick a photo to put inside of this. So uh, just happen to have this one that my my son did um, just today. It's raining out here and uh, cleared up just enough to show a rainbow. So I'm going to um, go in here and add a photo. Uh, let's see. This is it here. And um, I want to position this over the letters that I made. And so there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. I can um, just kind of look at it um, 
but I'll probably uh, reposition it later. So it's roughly in the right place now. And, um, and so I'm just going to accept that. And then I'm going to go over here to the layers and I'm going to make this layer with the photo less um, uh, less opaque. And, um, and so that gives me the option of being able to place this image inside of where my, my uh, letters are a little easier. So I'm going to highlight the desert again. And I'm going to use the magnetic here so that it doesn't change the, um, the shape or the orientation of the, of the picture. It'll, it'll keep it consistent if I grab it by the corner. So I'm going to move it in here and move it in here. And then, uh, let's see, I need to place. I like it like that. I got to make it a little bit wider here. Like it covering like that. Get a little bit of the road down here in the word rain. I get some of that Joshua tree uh, in these letters. And then you can see the rainbow go all the way across with the clouds and everything. So that's really cool. All right. Now I'm going to go back over here. I'm good with that. I'm going to go back over here and make it 100% again. And then uh, back to the layers. The letter layer that I started with needs to be locked. So it's underneath this photo. And... Um, and it doesn't matter to me now that I can't see it because what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this over. I'm going to lock those letters. And then I'm going to tap again to select. Now, when I'm selecting, it's kind of hard to see, but the little gray lines that are moving across here has selected everything in the background. And the letters are actually not moving. I'm going to go over here and click Automatic. And there's my, th this is showing actually the background is selected and it's going to drop out the letters in the middle, but I want to make it go the other way. I want the background to be inside the letter. So I'm going to invert it just like that. And uh, I can check again and make sure that I like the way it is. And it, I've got the rainbow going across here and a bit of the Joshua tree and you know, it's not perfect, but it's it's going to work for our little demonstration here. Um, and so then the, the next step is to go back over here to the layers. And now I'm going to click on to the photo. And on the photo, um, I'm going to clear it. And then what winds up happening is it clears all the bits of the photo that are not part of the letters. The letters are still highlighted. I don't know if you can see that very well. The letters are highlighted down here with the squiggly line coming across. So now I clear. And then here's our photo inside the letters. Looks pretty cool. Um, now, because I'm me and I like doing... Uh, fun things with letters I'm looking at this and thinking well maybe I could you know help this pop just a little bit more um, by uh, creating some kind of a drop shadow or something like that so then what I'm going to do is back over here to the layers the layer of the original letters we don't need anymore okay and the layer now that has the photo inserted becomes the one that we're going to use for the rest of the text treatment so the first thing I'm going to do is alpha lock this. That allows me to uh, duplicate it and then create um, additional colors to put into the, the design. So I'm going to duplicate once. And the first time I'm going to do this, this first one that I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it white so that I can have a, um, a highlight on the top of the letters. Then I'm going to duplicate again. And I'll make a black version and I'll duplicate again and I'll make the one that I'll turn into the drop shadow. So um, first thing is the highlighted part. 
Um, I'm going to select this one here. And um, I'm on a white background, so my highlight, I don't want my highlight to be white because then I won't be able to see anything. So I'm going to go with uh, a little different color. I think maybe what I'll do is I'll lift some color out of the sand here as the highlight. And so I'm just going to put my finger on there and find a place where I like it, like right there. And then that becomes my highlight color. Going to go over here to this image. It's already alpha locked. And so all I have to do is select it and then fill it. And now that whole part is, is uh, the highlight tan color. Then I'm going to go over to this one. And I want this uh, to be, the, this is the beginning of the shadow, so it needs to be black. So I'll go back up here to the colors. Going to select a black out of my palette, which you can see is not completely black. I'm going to make it completely black. Just drag it down here. And I'm going to fill that layer. And then this one, I want to have the same black, although I'm going to use it differently. So I'm going to fill this one black too. Okay. So now, how do we get um, how do we get these uh, different colors underneath the original photo to um, work the way we want? Go back up here to the highlight. And I'm going to zoom in so that I can see it better, see what I'm actually doing here. So I'm just picking a place in the image. doesn't really matter where it is. So I had already selected um, the highlight color layer. And so now I'm going to um, use this button here, the free form, to select that layer. And then I can move it just by dragging a little bit. You see that? And I could actually move it all the way out here like this if I wanted to. But all I want to do is just give a little glow to the edge of the letters to make it look like I got a little bit of light hitting it from somewhere. We're not really sure what. It also kind of makes it look like maybe these letters are cut out of a piece of wood or something. Okay. So I'll leave it like that for now. And then I'm going to go down here and do it with the black too. Now on the black layer, I'm going to pull it back the other way. So I have the highlight showing and then I have the black showing. And then the last one is, uh, this is going to be the one that's going to turn into the drop shadow. Now, um, so I'll, I'll just do it first. I'll, highlight it and I'll pull it down here and I'm going to make it like much bigger than than that original edge there. Now, uh, you could leave this like this and it would it would look fine. Um, but I kind of like my drop shadow to um, to have sort of a um, a blurred look to it, you know, so that it's a softer kind of a drop shadow. This is this is really cool actually if you're going for the for the you know hard 70s kind of uh, uh, shadow lines but um, um, I want to do something a little softer make it look like the image is actually kind of floating so um, so then what I do is go back to the layer I needed to alpha lock this layer so that I could so that I could fill it with the black but now that I want to use the blur tool um, I'm going to need to take the alpha lock off Okay, so then I go up here to the blur. I'm going to pick Gaussian Blur. And we're just going to kind of drag across. Now watch here. Watch for the blur. The further I come, the further I drag it, the more extreme the blur is. You see, it gets bigger and bigger. And then if I go back this way, then it goes back to original. So I'm just going to pick a point where I like it. I think I like it right about there. That's about right. And then I'll exit out. Now you do have to get it right when you do this because, uh, um, you know, you, you, 
I can't go back into to the blur and change it back to the way it was. I would have to actually revert um, back using the arrow. But um, so there's that. So I've got a blur layer. I've got this dark edge layer, and then I have this highlight edge layer here. It kind of looks like torn paper or something. And then it's kind of cool because it does all of that with this um, sketchy nature of the of the pen that I used for the original letters. All right, now I'm going to pinch here and zoom back out and see how we like it. And I like it. So quick review. You make your letters first on one layer. On the, on the original layer, that's this one down here. You just make your letters on this layer. Then you're going to put a photo above the layer where the letters are. You lock the layer that you started with. And then you're going to um, um, open that layer up and, and select it. Make sure that it's all lined up. You can go back to the beginning of the video and, and see how that goes. But then the next step is to, is to clear, once you've selected... You clear the the photo.